Okay, so uh, I figured I'd take a quick second to show one of the ways, uh, and it's becoming two of the ways, that I kind of grift the market board in Final Fantasy. Um, I always joke <laughs> about having an empire for these two things, but I think it shows some of the skills that really help me in keeping up some, some guild generation without having to do too, too much crafting. Um, I've actually been trying to level my crafters, and it costs a shit ton of money. So, um, one thing that I do is I go on the market board, uh, whenever I want to list stuff. It doesn't have to be every day, but it can be every day. And then I pop open, uh, another tab or another window, and I open up, and, and some of you are gonna like this, but I open up a spreadsheet. Da -da -da -da. Spreadsheet. Scary. Yes. But, uh, I started this with a, just to keep track of dies. Um, dies are something you can craft in-game. Uh, crafting law. So you can craft dies in-game under, uh, pretty early on with any crafter. So you, it's not limited to a specific crafter. But you go to your other tab under this little uh, special recipe and you have all your dyes. Um, so essentially any crafter level 30 can craft dyes. Um, and you can buy the pigments on the market for like pennies. You can also collect these on your gatherer. They are probably the crystals are the most expensive part of this. But uh, if you track what the cost of the die is, it will be much more worth your while. Um, because this will cost you maybe... 300 gil to make. Um, and I can show you that by going down to the die section. Uh, the pigments will be under this die section. And I can look at the blue pigment. So any of the blue dyes that I'm making would just use this blue pigment. Um, note there are some dyes here that are not craftable. You have to purchase them or get them through other means. So that's why I have all the crafting dyes in this spreadsheet here. So everything I can craft, I have listed here. And I've been doing this for a couple of months. Um, and what I will do is look at the price. You know, I could buy pigment for 200 gil. Um, and if I look at my sheet and I log the price of all of the pigments, uh, sorry, the dyes today, I can see that the Storm Blue is selling for 5,050 gil for one die. So that is a massive net profit. Um, this is a very volatile market. So if you look up here, you can see it was only 1,700. It's been down to 400. So the dies do change value a lot. Um, I have found that keeping track of them over time in one spreadsheet helps me kind of keep an eye on what to expect to be a higher value. Lone brown is usually pretty high. Um, but set yourself a cutoff amount saying, I won't sell dye for less than this. So I don't sell dye for anything less than a thousand normally. Um, because I am currently working on another um, marketing tracker with the bi colored gems for the Endwalker Fates, um, I am currently not selling dyes for anything less than you know, 3,000, 4,000, um, so that I'm really making a big profit because the market is so volatile, you really can't sell like 50 of a stack or something. This is just something to keep you sustained while you're adventuring and while you're working on other projects. So what I can do is continue on my list here. This is today's. And I'm gonna look at the woad blue. So they're all sorted by color, so you just have to Click on the die tab, check the price, 750, enter it in. I am doing this on my one large monitor. Um, I use desk pins to keep this on top. It's really helpful. Um, use whatever works for you. Um, one, seven, two, eight. Now, I might add this to my sale list because this is a historical high price for this die. Um, it has been up to 4,000 in the past, so I'll have to think about it. 
um, and see if any other pigments are a little more expensive. Um, I can also check how many are on the market and see what they're going to go for. So I think the price could go up more, so I'm going to leave it for today. I'm not going to add this to my list to sell for today. Because um, you want to be careful not to flood the market with too many. Um, so I'll only sell like in between 5 and 10 at a time. And that's like for one retainer. And then as soon as they relist and they're sold, I will go ahead and relist more. Because the more you are selling, it's more likely that the price is going to drop. And it's just going to plummet because people want to get in on that or they feel like they're being undercut. So they'll just keep lowering the price because like I said, this is a really high percentage profit margin comparatively to the pigment. So you want to make sure that that price isn't going to just plummet from over saturating the market. Um, so you're kind of artificially limiting it. This is really being sold to people that either don't have any crafters, don't want to deal with crafting, or don't want to deal with getting the pigments on their own. So it it is really people just going in and spending the money. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I am going to do is to go into my saddlebag. If I can find out where it is. So we'll go saddlebag. Crack open that bad boy, and I'm gonna pull the dies that I already have crafted. Um, I keep them all in my saddlebag because it's just a good amount of inventory slots and I don't have to waste time going to my retainer on it. Um, so we want loam, remove. Loam is a pretty good price today, so we'll remove six at a time for loam. I don't want to scare off buyers by having too high of a chunk price because they have to buy six at once. Um, so we're just going to do six. Usually that's kind of the upper limit. Sometimes you can do less. Um, Ten is probably going to be too much if it's 5,000 guild pop. Um, someone's going to undercut you and it's going to sell faster. So six is a good cap for that. Um, so less green... We'll do the same, remove six, and storm blue. Six. Um, I don't want to go too crazy replenishing this because I don't know how long it's going to stay at these prices. If I see it again tomorrow, I may replenish like 20 from the pigments I have, but you know, it takes, what, five minutes to craft all of this stuff. Uh, and it's one pigment per die, so it's not really any loss to me. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and list them. Do. Sell. And I apologize. Let me move all this over. So it's visible. Um, where's my inventory? Inventory, there we go. And we're just gonna list them. Double check the price. A, and the price has even gone down on some of these since I pulled the value. And I usually only go a little bit less than what's on there. Um, don't feel bad about undercutting this. Like I said, super volatile market. It's going to go up and down. Just get in there. If your stuff doesn't sell within like two days for the price, just pull it back. Hold it in your inventory for a while until it goes back up in price. It's not hurting you. Trust me. You, you should not be spending a lot of gill on these materials. Five, eight, there, there. We'll just do that. Oh, too expensive. Way too expensive. There we go. And loam. Double check the price. Five, nine, two, five. Five, nine, two, five. There we go. Let's green four four five four four two five. All right, so that is gonna net us about a hundred k, a little under hundred k, maybe like eighty k. But still, that it's a really great way just to get some extra gill. Um, it'll help fund resources if you're leveling your crafters. But yeah, that is a great way to just 
set up something to track on the market with a very little upfront investment um, and to get some extra gill on the side. Uh, you don't really have to be an experienced crafter. You don't have to track down recipe materials. It is a great way just to get a corner in on the market. And that's what I've been doing for a couple months. So it certainly helped me build up some extra finances. I hope this helped and that's it. That's, that's the video. Bye.